kind of uh, challenges did you face uh, in your first lead role in a horror film? Something very, very different for you, very different approach. It was. It was. It was. It was my first uh, horror film, my first lead in a film, and it was kind of my first film because I had taken such a long hiatus from any kind of acting. So that in itself was a challenge, and. Um, I mean, I think that was, you know, I think that was enough of a challenge. And then the fact that it was a horror film. It's funny because, uh, you know, when we first started talking about the role, and I was uh, intimidated by it because it was a horror film, and now I look at it and I think, well, what's the big deal? <laughs> right. You know, I mean, it was fun, and it was a role, and, uh, and um, I guess it prepared me to do other challenging things. Once you make it through a horror film, you've pretty much made it through trial by fire. I know. <laughs> Gone through all those. You, go, you have all the extremes, and uh, and I, I tell you what was challenging, and I didn't think it could be accomplished, but I think staying up till three and at one point six a.m. helps achieve that. I didn't know that I could be realistically horrified, freaked out, and crying, and so I kept thinking, oh, I want to be organic, but when you are physically ex and emotionally exhausted, being there till three or six a.m., getting beaten up and thrown down the stairs a couple of times, and you're cold. I think we're mostly cold. Maybe one day no, high. No, 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 no. You I can achieve those things. I threw you downstairs. That's right. You kicked me someplace where it hurt. And yeah. we had to keep doing that same scene, my getting point, kicked in the- My point is, it was pretty, oh, you know, it was pretty real, you know? You stuff multiple times. That's why, my point is that it, it, that it was pretty organic. You know, I didn't have to fake anything because the circumstances kind of lended themselves to that. All right. now, I don't know if you noticed on her Facebook, but her children now want to know, Mommy, why do you always serve us raw liver? <laughs> now, why is that? Well, My know. children want to know when they can go to the have tongue, but okay, it was supposed to be cow tongue, but they never really told us where it was from. <laughs> Did you guys do any special preparation to get yourself psyched up or mentally prepared? Or? research your roles or anything? Um, I had to read some Shakespeare to prepare for that last scene on the stage. I wanted to make sure I really captured his essence uh, in that final scene. Um, I, I don't know, I mean, I had to work on the, I work on the way you wanted me to talk, because I don't normally speak that way, and I, I try to get creepier than what I normally am, but I hope that came across. Oh yeah, I did, I did not like Jack, the day I met him, and uh, that's because pretty much we were thrown into working at that scene, and and you, you were so you were so good in that role, yeah. I, and I don't think I was supposed to like Max too much. No, I mean I, I was supposed to be very very distant from you, and and actually. <laughs> and I I found that so impossible to get, wrap my head around, but I had to work on that. That was some prep, that that took some preparation. Um, the other stuff, I really did a normal, you know, preparation in terms of just uh, uh, understanding my objectives in each scene. But once we got on set, it was really about the relationships. So, you know, you, I always feel like you you can prepare so much, but once you once you're there, it needs to be like the first time. It doesn't need to be like you rehearsed it and rehearsed it rehearsed it. And we really didn't. We really didn't. We met each other on set and and went for it. You know, hers once or twice. And yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, yeah. That's I mean, that. but that's all. Yeah, and, and I was kind of uh, nervous about that. But now that I've been doing film a while, that's really good because then you're fresh when you when you're filming and you and you film so many takes. I forgot all about that ending. I really liked that ending because mm. that really would have continued after that, wouldn't it? Have? Right. Originally, that was supposed to be. The extra scene after the credits is that would have come up instead of the, the jack in. Yeah, because I remember we filmed that was the only thing I ever filmed in daylight, I think, other than the <laughs> little scene in the beginning of the movie. Everything else I filmed that night. Yeah. We filmed that at daylight before it got dark, and then we went in to the opera house and stayed there till the wee hours of the morning with no lights and no power. And that's the only film, that's the only And no heat it. and scary noises and, and no bathrooms. creepy people. And no bathrooms. And all over the place. No bathrooms. Uh, I love that coffee shop across the way yeah, until they closed and we were like, oh gosh, 
no place to pee except in the alleyway. It, it, yeah, I mean, that, that toilet that was in the, that back alley, I expect that got used. <laughs> I, I, I didn't remember that until we just watched it. Now, uh, is that place really haunted? Uh, there are stories, uh, yeah, about the hauntings at that, that place. It's, it's been explored by ghost hunters and all kinds of stuff. So uh, They actually mention, uh, Seth mentions the actual real world hauntings when he, he says uh, music at night, ghostly soldiers, something like that. What's, what's, the, what's the myth? It is they hear somebody walking on stage um, and they hear music at night, right? Workers from the era uh, are supposedly, supposedly have been seen by the uh, current owner, Gene Starnes, and uh, as a special feature, there's an inter audio interview where he says just that. And uh, you talk about taking it seriously, you know, he's, he conveys a sense of seriousness when he tells that story. Well, is that on this version? Of the it is not on this uh, yeah, festival okay. edition. It'll be, on the It'll be on the special edition. We're actually going to have. He and that will actually be kind of more of an Easter egg that you'll have to put it in your computer to see. That'll be a DVD ROM feature. Great. Because okay. because I know sometimes when you guys were filming without me and I walked around, there were parts of that place there when when there's no lights or anything and you're the only one there. It was really creepy. It really was. I also found those front rooms creepy because yeah. there was creepy stuff in there. Yeah, the the the, the dentist Christ, office the Christmas and Christmas tree just, stuff and yeah, I, I, office. you know, I, I was kind of amazed that a lot of that stuff that was um, sort of you know it, when you see it, it's it's not really a lot of set dressing. That was a lot of stuff that was just there. there. That's what made that a great location. It's a great location, and those holes that uh, GB eventually finds himself in. I was afraid of walking into them. In fact, you would say to me sometimes, don't step here, there's a board here. Yeah. Do you remember that? The, the beautiful thing is that the, that uh, Opera House is now preserved for posterity. I doubt that it'll ever see the funds to be to fully renovated because it'd be very expensive. Yeah, and they'd have to pull out those two stores because there's no, because otherwise there's no lobby. It's amazing how it's lasted as long as it has. They have replaced the roof, but other than that, that's all the original fixtures and everything. So now it's like, it's locked in for all time, you know, on, on the our The way film. it is is the way it is? Yeah, uh, uh, they, they've replaced the roof. That's the only thing that's been done since, you know, like the original era decoration. Is that on the historic register or something that can't be torn the, down? The or? building is. Uh, the way it works in that town, you have to restore the facade, and unfortunately the facade of the building is very different now, except for the windows up there. I think he's, he's kind of moving in that direction. Pretty cool. Does anybody have any more questions? Because you can tell from the stage the sound effects in that room. Oh, awesome! Yeah, clearly it was designed for uh, for you know. Because I know when you guys were messing around, I got on that stage and I started doing some. Oh, we've all done that. We, we've all got up there. Yeah. The it sound. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't kill you. It, 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 it resonates all the way to the back, and it's really a phenomenal facility. That's because they didn't have these things back in the day. Right. And if you wanted a, the guy in the back to hear you, you had to make the guy in the back hear you. So yeah. So and you know the, when they designed that place, the acoustics are just terrific. I can only imagine what it was like when there was like a ceiling. <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah, there looks like there's a dog costume. Or something. <laughs> well, thank you guys for coming. We uh, appreciate you coming to the festival premiere. You are watching Mutant TV.